On today's Technical Corner, Scott has visited us a few times from CG Tech. Now, we've learned a lot around Verica and the software, but within that, there's a module called Force. Now, if you're looking to save money, time, and tool life, then we're going to find out what you should be investing in. Scott, tell us what Force is. So thanks, Mark. Um, right, this is again going to be a condensed demo. I would normally spend a bit longer than what we are going to be today. This is just going to give you an overview of how we go about optimising a toolpath with Vericut 4. So as you said, it's all about reduction of time and money and things like that. So let's get the software going. Um, I'm just going to dive into here. And the first thing I'm going to do is put the software into what we call analyse mode. So what that's going to do is, is just note here on this drop down, I've got a bunch of different materials here. Oh, well, that's quite important, actually. So, so you can actually uh, optimise on any material for a customer? Yes, we can. It will actually take the characteristics of the material into account. OK. okay. So we're just going to get the software going. So, so hold on a minute. So, so really, Force is doing a little bit what Vericut does. It, you're analysing the actual path of the yes. cutting and the machine tool. Okay, but based based on that machining strategy, is that correct? That's correct. What we're doing in the background is making a calculation on on force and chip thickness. Right. Okay. So as you can see, it's a very modern milling technique. This you see this widely used across the industry. Traditional, would you say? Well, it, the, these sort of tool parts were probably introduced to the market, probably getting on to around five years, maybe five to eight years ago. Again, they were a bit slow to take up, but. They've revolutionised the industry. They really have made making parts and roughing parts much, much faster. So they're very, very good. However, they're not perfect. So, so does it integrate with existing CAM products that uh, engineers may have? This toolpath would have been from a CAM system. Right. Um, all of them really nowadays have the ability to have this type of strategy. Chip thinning type toolpaths allowing you to um, engage on the tool with a full flute length. So what we've done there is we've analysed that toolpath. And you can see we've got some graphs on the screen now. And we've actually analysed the chip thickness and we've analysed the force. Now, that toolpath is, is very, very good. We've got a very nice, consistent chip thickness going on here. But we've also got inefficiencies in it. Okay. So, so I think that's quite obvious. So obviously, you've got chip thickness. That's, that's you know, as I say, don't have to say any more. But when you're talking about force, is that when the actual a tool hits the first part of that, that billet, for instance? It can be. You can see heavy spikes on entry okay. or through the process sometimes. And these will be identified in the force area here. Again, this, this particular tool path is quite good, but it's not uncommon to see sort of a bit of a high spike going on here. So what we want, would want to do with the force calculation is defend against that, protect the tool, improve the tool life. So we defend with our force parameter, yep. but we attack the chip thickness. So, so trying to be more thickness. consistent then? Yeah, so we want to make this chip thickness more consistent than what it already is and make the productivity gains. So let's just interact with these graphs a little bit. So what I can do is just zoom up on an area. So I'm just going to make a right click and we can actually look at this chip thickness a little bit clearer now. We can see again along the way we get a nice consistent hit, but all of these areas here, 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 inefficient. Right, okay. All right, so we want to lift this chip thickness up to make it in line with this. We want to flatten it out. That's what yeah. we want to do. And we're going to do that by varying the, the feed rate in the NC program to make it flatten out. Right, okay. Right? The software takes care of it all. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so all I'm going to do with this to optimize is right click, that opens the tool, we populate our limit into this area here. OK, so if we go back to our graph, again, if we just zoom up there, if we look on the left hand side here, we take the, the, the reading from that area. So we can see we've got a chip thickness in this area of 0 0.0774. So we right click, put that limit in. It's quite, it's quite simple to use, actually, as so, well, isn't it? Mark, it's the most simplest piece of software I've ever used. Right. I've been in the game a long time, yeah. and it's, it's just the gains you can get for the ease of use are just, it's just, yeah. So we've populated that limit. Again, we've got our force limit here. So where have I set that? Let's just zoom out and we can see I've set my force limit to there. So we're just taking these peaks off. Yeah. That's all we need to so do. So save, saving the tool here then. Yes. Yeah, so we yeah. just then peaks there. We're just going to lower the fleet feed rate slightly to just defend a little bit, just to take them peaks off. Yeah. So once I've done that, close our graph, we do a reset. So uh, this is now going to reset the process. 
Go on. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to envisage where, where this work best. Is it, is, is it for a company that's got a lot of batch work, automation, for instance, or is it more sort of prismatic parts, one-offs? It could be anything, Mark. Anyone that's looking to make a reduction in time on the machine yeah. will benefit from this software. So you want to protect your tools, get more tool life, reduce cycle time. Force is what you need. Right, okay. All right, so we're just going to now put the software into Optimize. So this is now going to replay that process. It's just going to start the simulation. Now what's happening in the background is we're, we're po pro reprocessing the NC code with the optimized feed rates. We don't need a complicated post-processor to do this. This is the Vericup controller taking care of it for you. All right, so we just speed that up to full speed. We get to the end of the process and we're going to have yeah. a reduction in time. When you say, uh, you know, what, what, what's, is there an average percentage that you can actually save? Or it just depends on, on okay. the customer's requirement? So it, it depends on the material. Yeah. Um, so aluminium, we can save probably around up to 15%. You've got to remember with aluminium, Mark, is that can the machine tool go any faster than it physically can now? Yeah. We've proven time and again it can, but the most really with aluminium we've ever seen is probably around 15%, Mark. Yeah. Um, but hard it, metals. 15% plus. Well, if I'm doing some math, you've got 8,760 hours in a year on your yep. spindle. You times that by 15% from an aluminium point of view, it's, it's no brainer. It's a chunk it? of time. Yeah. It's a chunk yeah. of time, a chunk of money. Yeah. And we've actually, if you look at that, the first thing Force presents to you is what we've saved. We've actually saved 23% out of that toolpath. Now, based across 100 parts, all right, it's only a small cycle, but it's, it's scalable. An hour is 15 minutes, 25%. So we can actually calculate on a base on 100 parts, 100 pound an hour your machine, 414 pound. Well, let's look at a, that. Let's look at that across a year. So let's uh, take that across five machines, 100 pound an hour, eight hours a shift, two shifts, 220 work days a year. So I've now got a, a 400. and 11,000 pound saving. Well, that's an amazing figure. That I mean, you, you, you just. Any engineer looking at that has got to be rubbing their hands and think, well, how, how much money I can save? Yeah, and, and people that have taken it on have seen those benefits. Yeah. Um, they're getting the benefits today. Um, so what we can maybe look at now is let's have a look at what we've actually done. So again, original program, yep. optimized program. So let's just zoom on the graph. Let's have a look. Straight away, you can see it's flattening out though, can't you? Straight away, yeah. yeah. So yeah. let's just zoom up on there. There's our chip thickness, our blue is before. Fill comparison, anything in the light green area is, um, is productivity saving. And something maybe important to note as well, if I just um, turn that off, turn the force graph off. If you want to, if I just put the software into analyze, like I've done there, you can actually interact with these graphs. So you can, it helps you develop a process. Yeah. If I just make a click on an area here, very cut arrives at that motion block again, and you can actually look at where you are. So if you've got a spike, let's say a force spike in the process, you can actually identify where it is by interacting with these graphs. All right. It might be, uh, as I say, I'm not an engineer by heart, but I'm sure engineers will probably sort of say, well, what, what about the surface finishing? It will, well, yeah, because we're adjusting feed rates to compensate and use the tool as it's designed, it will improve surface finish as well. Right, so, so hold on, so you, you're not only talking about saving your money, protecting your, your tool life effectively, but yep. you're also saying that the surface finishing would be as good, if not better. Correct, probably right. better. Yeah. Because we're, we're using a tool, generally when you move around a part, it's generally programmed with one feed rate. Now if that chip, is, chip thickness is varying, then therefore the surface finish will vary. So if we flatten it out, yeah. The furnish, surface finish should be improved. And I find it quite incredible that you, you can actually work with any material as well. Yeah, any material. So we've got a lot of customers working with titanium, inconel, aluminiums that want to optimise their process. But it's, yeah, it's any, any material you can think of in the market we can, we can optimise. And, and when engineers uh, embrace and, and look at force, for, for instance, uh, we've done some videos where we can actually sort of see it, see it basically side by side, you know, with actual uh, real time machining with the actual simulation uh, effectively. What, what can you offer engineers that may watch this video and think, yeah, actually, I want to I, I want to save money and that, that could be a good solution for me. What, what can you actually offer them? Can you go to their premises and actually put their own code in? Yeah, we're very much about talking to the customer 
asking, you know, where are your pains? Show us a part. We can analyze the part if we, if we want to, uh, have a look at the process with them. Um, and show them the sort of savings we, we can protect, potentially get for them. Well, Scott, that's, that's amazing to find out a little bit more about force, but, you know, call it a module. I call it a gem, actually, to be fair, with the amount of money that it can save you. So thanks very much. Um, if you're watching this uh, video and you're looking to save time, protect your tall life, then why not speak to Scott? He can come and do a demo at your premises.